I was a youngster, I started coming here, uh, well, for the fairs, but primarily later over to watch the hockey games. And before they had artificial ice, um, we used to come over and never start until about the 1st of January, where it got cold. And if we came to just before the games, if we came early, then we'd ask the chap that was flooding the ice if we could scrape the ice between periods and we got in free. What I remember was playing hockey here back in the 1960 when it was still natural ice and the old Bill Barn was, Barn was still here at that time and that was church league hockey I guess at the time. I thought that was big league when I was playing there and the, with all the bigger older guys. When they had the natural ice and the, the league started up 1st of January and it was a Legion team, the Legion sponsored it. And there was an Indian chap from Onondaga, up between Onondaga and Middleport. He skated down the river ice every night to play hockey. And then he skated back home after the game. Incredible. I, I Incredible. wish I could remember his name, but I can't remember it now. I played hockey here in 1968 to 1970 on a ladies hockey team. It was formed before and continued after I played on it, the Caledonia Diamonds. Not many people heard of us. I'm not even sure if we won a game. Because it was a pretty rickety old building. This was before it was this new Yes, like the new building the that was wonderful. Were, like it was terrible. It was cold. Mm -hmm. And uh, but Friday come Friday night you just you went to the Corvair game and that was it. <laughs> That's what you did. Wire mesh fencing around the ends and low rafters on both sides and not that much seating at the time. Well, you would have remembered when they enlarged the ice surface and put the new lobby on. And yeah, the, the new lobby on and the booth was right down in the front when you came in. But the same people pretty well carried on organizing and, and working with it. That seemed to be the between the Kinsmen and the Lions Club and and the volunteers from other walks of life. When the Corvairs got into the playoffs, the thing I remember the most was you had to be over here by 6.30 or 7 o'clock for an 8 o'clock game, or the arena filled up. You just couldn't get in. And there was one of the Corvairs uh, uh, executive would stand outside at 7.30 and people were lined up still trying to get in. And he would say the arena is full and there's no more room, but if you want to go in, you take your chances, but there's no refund. So people would come in anyhow, and Ed Dietz, he took the money at the gate for years and years, and people were walking back out saying, I want my money back, they won't give me my money back, there's no room. <laughs> but I married a Corvair, and he was quite famous yes. because yes. 50 years ago next April, the Caledonia Junior D Corvairs won the Ontario Championship and it was the old arena and people were hanging from the rafters, oh, yes. cheering the Corvairs. The and they were the wonderful days because then you got on, the boys got on the fire truck and went around town and it yes. was just a huge yes. party and they've been famous now for the last 50 years because of that. I remember the year that Corvair dressing was up there and all the executives we used to stand up around the top there. And the year they were playing that seventh deciding game with Hamilton Fin Cups, the owners of the Fin Cups there was no place to, so one of the executives let them come up to stand up there, and I thought there was going to be a war, <laughs> like letting them come up there, like, holy cow. Here, where there's glass, there was nothing. nothing. So you're, I remember as a kid putting my chin basically around the top of the boards and players, junior yeah. hockey players coming through. And Pretty well followed the Corvairs all the way through their years that they won the Junior D Championship and C Championship. And and the intermediate team? Yes, the intermediate team won an All-Ontario Championship the one year. You know, this place, as my dad had alluded to earlier, was so jammed. Myself, as a 10-year-old, was in the rafters on the far side of the rink from us. There's eight rafters, and there was myself and seven buddies in those rafters watching the game because there was just no other place to go. Like back in 75, that championship, the streaker, I'll never forget that. When that streaker oh, came yeah, out, that was it, was, unreal. it was almost, a, he came running out of the runway down where their dressing room was, yeah. all the way out to the blue line, right. and then back in again. Back he had in, ski yeah. mask on, yeah. and, that was, and a yeah. parachute, running yeah. shoe. That was it. That and then, like it. I said, as we turned out, it was the trainer <laughs> for, for that junior hockey team. Yeah. 
when people came out, you came to the rink, and especially on Friday nights, a bad crowd was a thousand people. Yeah, so that's basically, right. this place was full. It was comfortably full. full. It, the atmosphere in here, incredible. In the winter time, this was the center of town. A lady from Burford came in and she'd say, let's go Burford. Yeah. <laughs> and we make fun of her. Even when I drive up the highway, if I'm on the way to London or something, the sign will say Burford and I'll say Burford. <laughs> and then there was on our side, there was Gwen Tyne, oh. who had her pots and pans oh. with, uh, oh. I don't know whether marbles in them or stones, and she'd be rattling, rattling pots them. and pans. <laughs> Broomball started up. I played broomball, and it was uh, the Legion had a team in GLA, the Kinsmen, and it was for men's type of thing. Eh? Rarely missed a broomball game <laughs> when the broomball was very popular in the area. Every Monday night, every Monday night was broomball night in Caledonia. That's when you took tickets and you were on the executive and you played and. You didn't get to referee very often, but you had to be involved. There had to be some involvement to keep things going. But you had six teams, and it was it was pretty pretty competitive for a broomball at that time. Well, the, the thing that comes mostly to mind are the big dances that used to be here, and most particularly, probably, the Corvair dances, mm -hmm. which were huge events and the arena would be full and you would have live music, live dance bands um, and all your friends would be there and it would be a very posh, posh outfit for Caledonia. We all wore the dresses of the day, I can, we went from long to mini and uh, they were great days then, I thought. One especially um, good dance was the year the mill burnt down. Oh, yes. And so we were dancing and then the, I guess probably most of the firemen ran out and we followed them and went up and watched the mill burn for a while and then headed back to the dance. So I always remember that one. That was about, would that be about 69 or 70? Okay. Something like that, around, around in there. But the ones that stayed here though, they opened the end, the end doors at the end of the arena and they opened the doors and the dance music was going on and people were dancing in the flame. You could see the light from the mill in the background of it and the mm -hmm. smoke and so forth. It was a big, it was a big deal. Mm -hmm. Well, in Centen I think it was centennial year, um, a group from town organized some dances, uh, Peter Rumble, Dennis Sabo being one of them. And they had some pretty good entertainment. One of them was uh, Burton Cummings and the Guess Who. Mm -hmm. And so that was pretty big stuff back in the day. Mm -hmm. And they were basically, I think, in grade 13 themselves, maybe first year university. And they hosted those dances and they were really popular with the kids and that was centennial year. We used to run a fundraiser at the indoor beach volleyball tournament where we would bring in about six tandem trucks of sand. The whole floor was full of sand and three to four big courts and people having a blast and then on the Saturday night we'd move all the sand out and have this big dance and of course the aftermath the cleanup on the Sunday morning oh, when because yeah. we kind of participated well in yeah well. exactly <laughs> And the, oh, of course, the Saturday night skating was always a huge thing when we oh, were yes. kids too, that because they awesome. used we used to skate here before they had the artificial ice. Yes. And then this rickety old thing that they used to flood, you had to stop and flood. Yes. And there were so many kids in here that you all had to skate in one, one direction. Way. And then there were like referees, I guess you would call them, to keep everybody going and keep the boys probably under control. And, yes, and but that had, was Saturday you go, night you skating. You could only go around clockwise mm. for so long and then everything stopped and then you had to reverse directions and you all stayed with the flow. There was no 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 getting out of formation. But the pace place was packed out. Yes. I mean this was the place to be on a Saturday night when you were like a teeny bopper. And there was a couple and uh, his name was Rogers and I can't remember the name of the girl. They came to every figure skating like free skating, public skating, and they danced in a tandem. Do you remember them, Danny, no, dancing? No. And they were like they were professional dancers, just skating around. That they didn't do swirls or anything like that. They just held hands and skated for 
two hours just around and skated and that uh, they were really something to watch during the, the public skate. I came here for many years because my daughter figure skated for, from the time she was about three years old till she was 16 and I was involved with the, on the committee for the skating. It was always exciting at Hockawaka, that was a skating competition of Haldeman County, you know, and with Heather won a medal, and she did win quite a few medals, so that made me always proud. Cuga, Caledonia, Hagersville, Oswegan, Waterford, and it went from one arena to another, and the one year I, com I guess I convened the one that was here, and it, it's quite a bit, you know, you have a lot of competitors, and, and the kids get so excited, and they look so beautiful with their figure skating dresses on. flood and oh, this, gosh, this yes. was, it was all the way up and over yeah. Caitlin Street so the yeah. whole fairgrounds the rink all the way up in the spring it was all the way across Caitlin Street yeah. I remember that yeah. all, it was just to the sidewalk yeah. right in the front of the oh, United it Church huge. it was huge yeah I remember that yeah. that's I remember about this facility because yeah. before they, so yeah. they improved the dam system and everything. it flooded out and, uh, and, it, and fish came in and everything, it, it, was a, it was a mess. The Baptist Church first came to the fair in, in 1896 when the ladies decided it was a good time to do some fundraising. So they approached the fair and asked if they could man the dining hall, which they did, and that year they made uh, just under $30. Originally, when I was a kid here, the Baptist booth was a wooden structure near the river. But when they revamped the area, we obtained this corner booth where we've been for a number of years. We thought we'd died and gone to heaven when we got given the, uh, or the rights to the, uh, the dressing room that was stinky when you first went in there. But, mm -hmm. but it, and then when it, became... it just used to be a shed out there with planks, you know, mm -hmm. so we evolved as well. Mm -hmm. There's probably about 30 of us that split up the hours and take turns, but there's a much greater number of people that are involved behind the scenes, um, preparing the food at the church and um, picking up supplies and setting up and tearing down. So pretty much almost everybody involved in our church are all involved in this weekend in some way, shape or form. No fair was ever complete without stopping at the Baptist booth for your hot dog and your piece of pie. That's what you did. <laughs> we plan on making just under 100 pies. And they're all baked at the church, according to the Board of Health rules. And um, there, last year we didn't have one piece left. The Baptist right here. Baptist, old dressing room number, well, it was four that we always called. Yeah. And they always had that for the, yeah. for the fair because you always went there. You always had went there. Food. Oh, they made great food. Yeah. We see all the action pretty much around us. Um, we feel like we're kind of in the hub of all the activities here. And uh, so it's fun just to watch and serve people and kind of look out and see all the, the bodies of people moving around and with their children and people meeting up with each other that they maybe haven't seen for years and greeting each other. A few years ago, we had a very stormy, windy weekend. Mm -hmm. and this place in this area becomes almost like a wind tunnel. So we had some issues um, with having to batten down the hatches a couple of times because everything was blowing around inside and uh, we had to take the windows down and uh, serve out of one side where we weren't catching the wind quite as much. They'd arranged for the musical ride. This is just not that long ago. And uh, the horses, they made the arse, I think, I think maybe the fair board members had to make the semi-stalls for them and the uh, horses were boarded in here and then we were allowed to come in afterwards and we could talk to the RCMP who looked at, were looking after the horses and we could get up quite close and personal with them and they were beautiful. There is the uh, church service on Good Friday for all the churches in Caledonia and the area. The um, Country and Western Music Festival that's put on here on uh, Labor Day weekend. And also they had, do they still have the um, extravaganza here? The, mm -hmm. um, the on egg, uh, mm -hmm. the children come and uh, the kids who've never 
seen a chicken or have no idea what a cow does and are amazed where they get milk from. It's always very interesting, I think. The first designer bag bingo. I could not believe what I was seeing. It was amazing and wonderful. Well, the, fairs, the, 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 the fair, fair was big, the big. biggest thing yes. in our lives. Yes. With our parents, because like from a young age, it, everything was the fair. So my dad's birthday was the end of September, but it was virtually never celebrated because the preparations for the fair were always underway. So Correct. as soon as milking was done, or he was up here during the day and then back, back up here at night to get ready. And then yes. we just basically lived at the fair. We'd just seek out when we ran out of money, we'd go beg for a little bit more. Back so, to the offices till, till mm -hmm. either mum or dad came in from whatever they were doing, um, that, that's what you did. And I, I don't know if you remember this, but um, the fair was such a big deal that we all got new outfits to wear to the fair. Oh, I don't remember that. Well, I did. Oh, oh, but you were special. I know. Mom always liked you best. And I guess first things I remember when we were joined uh, as junior, junior executive, they called us, was Ron Howden and Dennis Peart and myself. And I guess I'm not sure if that was before 62, we came down with all our fathers and everybody came in for the week of the fair and the, everybody farmed at that time. And when you had bees, uh, the place was full of men and their sons and whoever helping set up and get things going. And, and you always had to go uptown for lunch every day and had to go to the Exchange Hotel and then on to the Niagara restaurant for some Chinese food. Uh, that was a staple of the fair, fair life for that week before the fair. Every year, my father would take the hay wagon back to the bush with the tree. And uh, he and my grandfather, Bain, our Bain, would trim branches. And it seems to me the leaves changed color faster then because we pretty well had colored leaves in the arena all the time. And they brought up branches and they decorated the, um, the arena, the drill hall, with all of these branches of colored leaves all around, that was the decoration. And I can remember my father taking up wagon load of, uh, of the branches that he and Grandpa had, had uh, chosen from the bush. Um, and now, maybe someone would dispute this, but I don't know, but I have always been told that uh, my grandfather Bain and his brother-in-law, Harry Young, uh, were the ones who came up with the idea about decorating the hall with the branches. And then Grandpa and Dad kept up, the, uh, kept up that thing. I guess probably it was my mother. She, she decided she thought she should enter her baking and, and a lot of canning. And she also did a lot of needlework and knitting and, and sewing. And she, she enjoyed it. And so we thought, well, I might as well try give it a kick. So. Um, her hired hand won the Lazy Boy chair one year. Yes, but he ended up in jail at the same time. <laughs> He had a drinking problem. Yes. Sid, we loved him. We loved we him, loved yes, we loved him. Uh, Mom was putting in a whole lot of stuff, so my sister and I, we decided we'd put in a, a few things. And I remember I put my Johnny cake in and won first prize. And that was exciting. So, and the better yet, you could sell it then at, after the fair, so I made another 50 cents <laughs> beside the prize money. Also, it was um, the place to be seen uh, mm. Caledonia Fair on Friday night, uh, hordes of people, teenagers and that and whatever would be here on Friday night and this is where you came with your date and you saw mm. everybody under the sun even though you'd seen them at school too that day but you came and that was a big social event. And the main thing I enter is my pies because uh, I forgot my, I never made pies until I got married and then my pie crust is very flaky so then I thought I would like to try to beat one of these ladies that's not a good thing to say <laughs> uh, uh, and so it got my raspberry pie got first prize so now I put um, canning my pickles in, and uh, strawberry jam raspberry jam and I also put in some flowers I think I enjoy judging morning the most just seeing the exhibits, they're, they're new and bright, and watching a judge place the exhibits and then arranging them, making sure the book is filled out. 
but I have to uh, start very early in the morning to get my pies cooked because I want them fresh and and so my kitchen table is full and probably the dining room table is full and uh, I have different things sitting here and there yeah but you were always thrilled to come into the hall it looked so beautiful and it was so full and it was so decorated and everything everybody's work was so lovely I thought and uh, and that was so nice with the with the new arena and and of course then the fair looks so much better because the facility around it was so much better too I can hardly wait to get here actually because you know, you know it doesn't open till four o'clock and I'm always trying to get here a little sooner but uh, the hall looks so beautiful on Thursday that to me that's the the night that people should come. Another memory with mom coming over here when we were four, five, six years old, knee-eyed or grasshopper, and had to go through the exposition hall, this place, yeah. to look at, and, you know, you're like four, five, six, and even eight years old, and you're going, mom, get me to the right. I need the <laughs> midway. And it's like, oh, did you see who just won that? Yeah. She just won for her preserve. My first recollection of being in this building, well, it, it was actually the old arena, after the fair on Saturday night, I was amazed and concerned at how quickly things disappeared and within 20 minutes one would never have known there was a fair here. One year I, I did win the Bake Queen special, which is accumulation of things, so, so I was pretty tickled about that. But the fair, fair always seemed, it evolved, it evolved at the same time, it seemed to have new ways of Oh, setting exhibits up and the old building was set up one way but the exhibits were always a focal point in the old arena or the ex exhibition hall and it changed with every time you change the building around it became bigger and and better and and sometimes it was more improvements for setting it up and getting it organized. For me the Agricultural Society isn't any building that you put it in, it's all the people that have been involved mm -hmm. over the years. Mm -hmm. So the fun that we had and the people that you met and the fun that you had at the fair um, with your parents being so involved in something and meeting everybody and uh, the 4-H, I, I did calves like the 4-H calf club and all of that is is more, it's more than the building. It just seemed like there was all the old people, and old people, old friends came back every year, year after year, and you'd see people you hadn't seen maybe in 10 years, and you might see them for a few years at a time. It just, just renewing old acquaintanceships, a lot of it in some. So this was Dad's centennial hat, and this is him in it. And this is just in our kitchen at home, and he's goofing off. I don't, know, I don't know if you can see that, Jody. So, it's a little big. So we want to say, who wore, <laughs> who wore it best? <laughs> but it was lots of fun, and I forgot to bring his Stetson. Yeah, they because all, that's it. They all, all, every year, or several times, they had themes and uh, so forth. Mm -hmm. And one year it was, the, well, not one year, they wore them for a few years, mm -hmm. I think, the Stetsons. I think that some of the changes I remember um, is the amount of work that is required of all the fair members and fair helpers. When I first started, there were no assigned duties. Um, the ladies would come and patrol the hall as their own schedule allowed them to. A few years later, we brought in the idea that we needed to have someone always patrolling the hall for people to ask questions of particularly. Now you go from one thing to another thing. Fairs have become much more active. There are many more things going on and it requires sometimes a bit of supervision, sometimes just a friendly face there to ask questions or to answer questions and that has, has really uh, changed, I think. really decided what our future is going to look like. Um, it'll be a sad day on the Saturday night when we close the food booth down for the last time. But um, it's a lot of work too, so, but it doesn't matter. Your fundraisers are a lot of work and it's our primary fundraiser. So we will we'll have to really think through that and uh, decide on what we, our next endeavor will be. Well, we certainly wanted to thank the people that have supported us for these 
122 years. I figured it out last night. That's a long time to be part of an organized nation like Caledonia Agricultural Society and have worked hand in hand with them. So we want to thank everyone for that. But this place still is a great gem for Caledonia yeah. and for what the Fair Board, the Agricultural Society is doing to keep it alive and find other uses because there is even recreational uses to be used, whether it's indoor soccer, hockey training can be done off the ice and you have a great facility here, community events, dances, yeah. fundraisers, yeah. And, all, and obviously, of course, the Triple Crown, the fair. But uh, as far as our, uh, the older generations or the uh, some of the millenniums, they're going to be wanting to come to the ex exhibit hall and it'll be set up differently. I have no doubt about the way it'll be set up, but that's that's something to look forward to. I think that people will still come to the fair for the same things that they've always come to the fair and I think it will attract new people to come and see what's going on here. I'm looking forward to the plans of the moving forward. I really am. I think it's a wonderful undertaking that the Egg, Egg Society is doing. I know it's huge and I know it means the end of our beloved Baptist booth. I but know. let's face it, I'm a little tired of bacon pies anyhow. So. <laughs> It's a big undertaking and it's going to be something worthwhile when it gets done for the, well, for the generations that follow or whatever. I'm yeah. so glad that it's yeah. staying is going to look different, yeah. but the memories are going to stay. Yeah. And this is, this is just, I love this place. Yeah.